It's late at night and you start browsing Netflix looking for something to watch. You scroll through different titles, you even read a few reviews, but you just can't commit to watching any given movie. Suddenly it's been 30 minutes and you're still stuck in infinite browsing mode. So you just give up. You're too tired to watch anything now. So you cut your losses and fall asleep. I've come to believe that this is the defining characteristic of our generation. <laughs> Let's call it keeping our options open. Pete Davis made his graduation speech at Harvard Law School back in 2018. It has since been viewed online more than 31 million times. Mm. His new book is called Dedicated, The Case for Commitment in an Age of Infinite Browsing. And Pete joins us live this morning. Pete, thanks for being with us. I'm so glad to be here. Thank you so much for having me on. So, you know, in, in this day and age, it's true. I have my daughters that are just constantly scrolling mm -hmm. through things on social media. But uh, what was it that you think resonated about your speech? We've heard people say that tons of times. What, what did you say that people are so connected to? I think there's a real disconnect that young people uh, in this day and age are experiencing, which is we're told by older people all the time to keep your options open. Choose the job that will help you get the next job. Don't get tied down to a person because you don't know what's around the corner. Don't speak too much about what you believe because it might ho hurt your prospects in the future. But when you look at the people that we come to respect, when you look at the people who actually made an impact in the world, when you look at the people that are experiencing the most joy, it's the people who totally ignored that advice. It's the people who made a commitment to something, to a particular thing, to a cause or a craft or a community or a person or an institution. And, uh, and so I think people my age saw that disconnect and knew that it was time to uh, fight back against this message that we should always keep our options open. And one of the things you say is that commitment's often associated with you know, conservatism or traditionalism, which you know, a lot of young people may be trying to buck, but you say actually committing is more of a radical concept. Yeah, you know, look at all of the causes that so many young people are fighting for all of the ones that we appreciate and the ones we're fighting for into the future, they're all going to take a long haul commitment. I interviewed 50 long haul heroes for my book, people who worked on things for 10, 20, 30 years. And you know, one of them, take Evan Wolfson, for example, the person who fought for 32 years for gay marriage, or take Kimberly Wasserman, who fought a coal plant in the Little Village neighborhood right in Chicago. It took her a decade to fight for that green cause. All of the causes we care about are going to require commitment. And another reason I call it radical is it's not the message we're getting from people all the time. We're always being told, you know, build your resumes for the future. Don't get too attached to anything. Don't love that neighborhood restaurant because it might be bought out or sold off. And all of these people that are saying, wait, I am committed to a cause. I am committed to this particular restaurant. I am permitted to this neighborhood. They're bucking that trend and they're taking a radical act in doing so. So after you gave this speech, it, it has since gone viral online, but I'm curious how it was received at the time. So you're, you know, you're at a college giving a, you know, a, a, in that environment, they're always telling kids to keep their options open. So how was it received by the faculty and students there? I, what I've loved about the response to the speech is it hits people at different ages. So a lot of my fellow graduates came up to me afterwards and the people who saw the speech go viral um, wrote to me afterwards and they said, you know, this was a nice nudge that helped me when I was 70% of the way somewhere or 80% of the way somewhere, but I still had the fear of regret or the fear of missing out. This was a nice nudge to get over the line. And for a lot of the older folks, you know, some of them who were, you know, 20 years, 10 years into a commitment, they felt like it was a, uh, a message that helped them feel more confident in sticking with their commitments. And that was another goal of this. And, you know, there are some older folks who, you know, are setting out on commitment journeys too. You know, not every, you know, most people are in their age of kind of choosing a door off the hallway when they're in their 20s, but other people have different points in their life where they're ready to dive into something too. A lot of retirees, they're wondering, you know, I got 30 more years on this earth and um, I could flitter that away or I could use this as another act in my life to 
uh, make a difference and uh, build a relationship with something bigger than myself. Real quickly, before we let you go, we're almost out of time. How do you know when to quit? I mean, sometimes you're watching American Idol and you think someone never told this person they can't sing. At a certain point, you don't commit to something anymore, right? That's a really, really great message. You know, my book is not a dogmatic book saying never quit. It's, based, it's less aimed at people who are on a long haul journey and needing to stick with it and more aimed at the people who've never set out on a uh, long haul journey uh, in the first place. Gotcha. But, but uh, you know, the message I would say is check if it's just because of distraction or boredom or uncertainty or the fear of missing out. And if you've gone through that and you're pretty sure it's not because of those normal temptations and it's not a living commitment anymore, it's fine to quit. There's another commitment waiting around the corner. Cool. But for those who haven't dived in yet, the message of dedicated is yep. dive in. There we go. All but right. Robin, no, you shouldn't go on American I, Idol. Uh, no, I should not. You're a terrible singer. <laughs> Thank you. And you can go to PeteDavis.org uh, for more information, and there's his Twitter handle. Thanks, Pete. Thank you so much.